Bam. All right, guys, there's my first crappie of 2024 on my boat. <laughs> Not fishing with Sam. We might get together again, guys. We was talking yesterday. Look how white he is. All right, this is a banana pink belly. Okay. Now, I know somebody's going to ask me the name of it. And I'm trying to remember all the names of them. So if I tell you wrong, forgive me. I think it is. All right. Now, that might not be right. But just look on the site. All the banana colors are under the LC Shad, okay? Just look under the LC Shad, and you'll find them. Here's one pretty close to me. They're not real spooky. I don't have my spot lock on, though. Uh, a lot of times, you run your spot locks when you really spook them. Y'all see how nasty the water is? Yeah. So, what I'm trying to do... I went right past him. I done, I done came past quite a few guys. I've only been out here about 10 minutes. I just live. That bank you see up there, it's a gray house. It's going to be hard to see with a uh, GoPro. I live in that subdivision, guys. I've been in the bait shop. It was uh, 60 yesterday, and it's in the 60s today. And I thought, once the water has warmed up. Yes, it has. It was 41 Wednesday, and the... Uh, Excuse me, Tuesday, excuse me, Tuesday, the boat ramp was froze over. You heard me say it on Wednesday night's video. It was froze over. I checked it Wednesday. It was 41 degrees. So, I said, it's got to be warming up some. The top layer right now is 50. And the fish have pulled up in it. See right here? Now, I'm not, I'm not seeing boo coos of them. But I am seeing some fish, and so that's what's important. Uh, like I said, I threw about six of them. I had one follow me, and that's the first one I've caught. Now, I can see my bait coming down here. All right. I see my bait right next to the fish. This is where live scope helps you guys. Open water fishing. Came right past him. Here's another one at the bottom. So there's my bait. There's the fish. I came right past him. I'm using a 1 16th. I'd rather have a 1 32nd, but they're moving. If the fish are moving around, you got to go to a heavier weight. To keep up with them because the time you, your bait gets to them they're gone now i'm gonna turn my live scope here okay here's one here he's at 20 foot it's like a nice fish he's right here okay whatever which way this pole's turning so and look i'm gonna say something too and some of y'all gonna go watch and go like no 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 dennis the guys on crappy connection was talking about somebody asked him where's the best place to put your transducer they said, see, that fish has done moved. I don't even see my bait. Because he's done moved out of the line of my bait. Uh, and they said on the trolling motor shaft. All right, I got my trolling motor on spot lock. So I'm now I'm looking that way. Now I'm looking this way. Now I'm looking that way. Guys, they have those, they have those trolling motors on the back. I seen a guy here the other day with them. They have the trolling motors on the back so they can control the boat. If you're going to put it on your trolling motor shaft, you need, you need trolling motors on the back of your boat, guys. That's what I like. I like the spot lock. I can put it on spot lock. I can sit there and look around for a crappie. And I don't have to worry about controlling the boat. All right? I'd rather have that than I would the brakes on the back. Now, because I cast and retrieve. But, man, I fish docks. I don't really need them. Would the, are the trolling motors on the back be good? Yes, they would be good. I hadn't even priced them. But I bet you, I bet you do. They are two thousand dollars a piece. Bam! It's been a little bit, guys. This one looked pretty big on the scope. I'm gonna take his time here. One thing I learned about fishing: if you get if you get them green and get rough on them, you can tear the hook out and they're not hooked good. You can lose them at the boat and it makes you cry. <laughs> right? Now, guys, I was I was t just talking about the air brakes or the what they call them, the brakes on the back of your boat. Would I would I have them? Somebody give me a pair? Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to send me guitar. I can't afford it. If I was a young man fishing tournaments, and as I was 25, 28, 30, and playing on fishing tournament, crappy tournaments, even bass tournaments, they'd be nice. Even on a bass tournament, they'd be better than the power poles. There you go. That's a nice crappy there, guys. Well, they can see this color. 
Yeah, I, I thought about it. I thought, you know what? That'd be nice. I, I just don't have that kind of money. I finally got this boat paid for. <laughs> y'all know what I mean? Yeah. Some of you understand. I just got the boat paid for. Bam. All right. I didn't think this one was very big. It wasn't a very big mark. But guys, I'm not looking for big fish. I'm looking for fish. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If it's, <laughs> if, it's a, if it's a fish, I'm throwing at him. I'm not going... So he's probably eight inches long. I'm not going, nah, he's too little. He's too... I, if he comes within my scope and I can see him, I'm throwing at him. Gosh. Now, this was a bigger mark than the last one I caught. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, Sam and I would say that in our video, if y'all watched it. We said, man, that was a big mark. This mark was bigger than the last one. Now, got to think about that. If they're facing this way, they're not going to make a bigger as a marker. If they're facing that way, it's going to be a bigger mark, right? He, I thought, that's a decent fish right there. He's a bigger mark than that last one. Nah. <laughs> Guys, this hit me close to the boat. He wasn't but like 12 foot from the boat, and I just kept moving it. See, he looked bigger, too. Like I said, I don't, you know, I'm just, I'm not being selective. <laughs> Bam. All right, guys, they're not easy to catch. I've probably been 15 minutes between this fish. And I've thrown a couple different ones. This fish followed me clean to the boat, and he wasn't but 15 foot from the boat. And I kept throwing it. I bet I threw at this fish 30 times before he hit it. And he looked bigger. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, one of the things that, when I had that nine, which I got on my poor unit, I was better, a little bit better at judging the size of them. Um, I got a 34 transducer, because I went from a 32 to a 34. And since I switched transducers, I've had more trouble doing that. And also, I changed my, I changed this a lot. You know, I run out to 60 feet and look around. Then once I get close to the fish, if I get him in within 30, 40 feet, I shorten it. That also makes the fish size change. If you listen to guys that guide all the time and fish all the time, I mean three or four days a week, they usually set theirs like on 10 foot deep and 40 feet out. I know local guy here told me the same thing. And they don't change it. That way you learn the size of the shape. Well, I change mine constantly, so that's a lot of it too. A lot of it's my fault. But I do that because when I'm searching, if I'm searching for fish, I run it on out here, you know. Uh, I'll run it out here. It's, it's on, it's on uh, 60 feet. I'll run it on 60 feet. Then if I see some fish, I go toward them. And once I get close to them, I shorten it. Does that make sense? But if you're fishing tournaments and you're hunting for big fish, that would be important to learn the size of the fish on your, on your live scope. That'd be more important than if you're just out here fishing, right? And guys, this, this one was the next cast. I turned around after cut the camera off talking to y'all and looked out there. I said, there's one out there 30 feet. I brought it past him, and this cat crappy here had the right attitude. He just rolled up and grabbed it. Now, that's mine when it came past him. That's what I'm saying. You got to throw it a lot of them. A lot of them are interested in eating. A lot of them are not interested in eating. Guys, I don't know if I've been holding these fish in the camera or not. I look down sometimes, and it's crooked. There you go. I'm using this tin. I've used this tin on with Sam and the video with Sam a week. And probably the last four or five times I've been out, uh, I've been using this tin. I said, I'm trying to learn it. I finally got to adjust it. My son fooled with it at Thanksgiving. And uh, him and I played with it, and he showed me some other things about it. He's good at that kind of stuff. That's what he does, though. He's a graphic designer. He's fooled with cameras and, and that type of thing. And, hey, guys, if you want something, to, if you want to learn something about your phone, ask the 8-year-old or 10-year-old or 12-year-old, right? <laughs> They'll show you something on your phone. You had no idea. Kids with technology are much better with it than us older folks, that's for sure. All right, guys, I'm loading up. I think I was going to catch another fish and do an outro, and I caught a little teeny one. Yeah, I've caught a couple, quite a few small ones on this trip, but that's fine. Uh, this is the first trip I've been at catching fish. I'll take what I can get. Appreciate y'all, guys. Thank y'all for watching Fish in Lake Country. Yeah, this is what I put in at all the time.